It's been making people watch Transfer Deadline Day videos all day. From 2011, perhaps. Well, from 2011, I've been, I've been doing it all morning. And, you know, people often ask you, what's your favourite sporting memory? Is it like an All-Ireland final? Is it somebody winning the Premier League? Is it, you know, Ireland winning a Grand Slam? For me, it's Transfer Deadline Day in January 2011 as what I deem to be the greatest sporting moment of all time because it was just hours and hours and hours of pure theatre on Sky Sports. And this was before Sky Sports, you know, devolved into the smut that we got to know, such as, you know, dildos being placed in reporters' ears and things like that. This was when Transfer Deadline Day had class and it had excitement and uh, it had a lot of guts and a lot of glory about it. And I was just looking back at some of the deals from, from Transfer Day 20, uh, 2011. So eight years ago on this very day, the day started off in particularly dramatic fashion. So at around half past nine, the BBC were reporting that uh, at the Melwood training ground in Liverpool, Fernando Torres had shown up. So straight away at half past nine, the thing had got uh, the ball rolling. But there was to be done deals done early in the morning that were going to get the excitement up and running. So at 9.59, Nottingham Forest's quest for a full back is over. They have signed Paul Koncheski Woo! on loan from Liverpool. Wow. Deal number one. Well, Liverpool fans are actually delighted with that. That was like a... A, a moment where there was a, we are not going to tolerate any shit from this point on. We are getting rid of Paul Koncheski. Woohoo! It was a great moment for Liverpool fans, and a couple of moments after that, Torres gets into a helicopter. So uh, things are starting to, to ratchet up a small bit from a Liverpool perspective. Uh, we, we'll skip on to the afternoon. It was a quiet morning after that. At five past three, this is when Transfer Deadline Day really kicks off, because Sunderland midfielder Andy Reid has joined Blackpool for an undisclosed fee. And the BBC website asks, could this be potentially be a replacement? Uh, for uh, Charlie Adam, who's been linked with a, a number of clubs on that day. Uh, then at uh, 10 to 4, uh, we've got uh, some more Irish interest. Uh, as reported, Bristol City have completed the loan signing of Wolves striker Andy Keogh. He goes to Ashton Gate for three months. Uh, a quarter past four then, things kind of ratcheted up a small bit in terms of big Premier League moves. Uh, Birmingham confirmed the signing of a 26-year-old Nigerian striker called Obafemi Martins on a six-month loan deal uh, from Ruben Kazan. Things then start to get into the, the rumour mill and we don't know if some of these things are going to happen or not. And Dan Rohn of the BBC reports that Charlie Adam is on his way to Liverpool. More details on that when he gets it. Then, at 25-7, to 7, the big one, Chelsea and Liverpool agree a fee for Fernando Torres and the player is now awaiting a medical. And at the same time, reports in Portugal start to emerge that Chelsea are interested in completing a £25 million deal for a guy called David Luiz. Before all that start, starts to get sorted out, before we actually know if he's actually signed, sealed and delivered, at seven minutes past eight, Stephen Ireland completes his loan move until the end of the season from Aston Villa to Newcastle. Did you remember that Stephen Ireland played for Newcastle? Uh, not really. I, I don't think he did, did he? Did he like, play a game and then get injured and then... Did he just end up back at Villa? Did he, go, so. did he go from Villa to Stoke? So he must, somehow he ends up back at... That that's the only well, it's one of only two uh, Aston Villa mentions in Transfer Deadline Day 2011. Of course, still then uh, a heavy hitter at the top of the Premier League, or at least in the top half of the Premier League at that point. Mm. But at 25 past eight, we have an interesting development on, on Transfer Deadline Day. I don't remember this. According to the BBC website, there's worrying developments for Chelsea fans. If what worries you is completely speculative chat and social networking sites, the word on the tweet is that Benfica have pulled David Luiz off the plane to London and say they are analysing Chelsea's offer for the centre-back. Uh, but then, at a quarter to nine, Liverpool confirmed the signing of Luis Suarez on a five-and-a-half-year deal from Ajax. Uh, the, the Uruguayan, who they describe as 24 years old, will wear the number seven shirt. Then, at uh, ten past nine, Daniel Sturridge makes the move from Chelsea to Bolton until the end of the season, and uh, Charles and Zogbia is linked with a last-ditch move to go to uh, Newcastle United. That doesn't happen, nor does the Charlie Adam deal, but a big move does happen, and Ida Goodjansson joins Fulham on loan until the end of the season from Stoke. Uh, and then we get into the last hour of transfer deadline day, and this is when it all happens, really. At 5-11, to 11, Liverpool confirmed that Andy Carroll has signed, and we get this picture of uh, Andy Carroll. Uh, and we also get the picture the next day of Andy Carroll and Luis Suarez posing together beside King Kenny, which I think we can have a look at. There we go. Uh, uh, and now, infamous picture. Um, in the meantime, Conor Salmon messes everything up. Wigan confirmed the signing of Conor Salmon on a three-and-a-half-year deal from Kilmarnock. But back to the good stuff. Uh, Liverpool confirmed that Fernando Torres is now a Chelsea player. And uh, Benfica released a statement to the Stock Exchange saying that David Luiz has joined for a fee of around £21 million pounds plus Nemanja Matic. Uh, but it wouldn't be transfer deadline day without one final move. Plus Nemanja Matic. £21 uh, million plus Nemanja Matic. Really. Yeah. I know. That's pretty expensive. Was Matic not, not playing at that stage? Was he, was he playing anything? Was he, was he from the... Reserves slash on the twenty threes was it? It must have been, and then he obviously gets good. Yeah, it gets good. And they buy him back for twenty five million. Mm. So that was he just a carousel of cash. 
It was, that, that's all it is. That's all it was. Sloshing around. Uh, 29 minutes past 11, though. It's the final done deal of the day. Rangers have announced the signing of El Haji Juf from Blackburn after finalising a loan deal in the final stages of the transfer window. The other thing we had as well that day was one of Jack Wilshere's greatest tweets, which is now deleted, unfortunately, where he tweeted, Breaking transfer news, I just moved from the sofa to my bed. Uh, I don't know why he's deleted that. Maybe because he thought it would have been injury, made more injury prone. Yeah. How many games do you think... Um how many games do you think Steve Norland played for Newcastle? Eight. Two. Two, wow. A grand the, total of 49 minutes. If you type in Stephen Ireland Newcastle into Google Images, which I naturally did this morning, you actually get a fair few images of, of him playing. So I was thinking to myself, God, I really did forget this uh, fairly healthy amount of time he spent at Newcastle, but clearly that's not the case. Well, that's what it looks like from Transfer Market. That's, um, that's the information I'm I getting. I would trust Transfer Market. Two was, appearances, yeah. It's probably just a load of pictures from the one game. Uh, how many for Aston Villa? 35? 58. 58. Yeah, I think he was there four seasons. That's a poor return, isn't it? Not great. Oh, not great whatsoever. So that was uh, Transfer to London in 2011. They don't make him like they used to. And it's weird because 2011, you know, the world was in a worse financial place. Football was less grotesque, but maybe people were, you know, uh, more sensible about the idea that you need to do things a lot earlier in a transfer window. And January, as a transfer uh, saga, just isn't a good thing to get yourself into. I disagree. I think that it's a great thing to get yourself into. If you can get Luis Suarez, everything else you ever do on transfer deadline day is a, is a success. You, you, on balance, you still win. Like signing Luis Suarez, signing David Luiz was a great signing. True. Signing Fernando Torres for fifty million, not a great signing. No, but... Uh, a complete bust. Complete bust. But the transfer deadline day from a Chelsea perspective is probably successful, given the amount of money that they have to just throw away and... Well, if you think about that transfer deadline day, so they wasted 50 million on Torres and then they gave Matic away for... So it was 17 million was what they initially offered and then it went to 21 plus Matic. And then they have to spend 30 million to get Matic back, is it? Something like that. It's not a great day's business, is it? Not a, not a great. I don't think Roman Abramovich really cared too much, though. They made 50 million from David Luiz and then got him back for half that. So, well, obviously that money wasn't paid. I, I often think that if you have money like Roman Abramovich, you can kind of be like John Cleese in Rat Race and just sit there and have Jim White on all afternoon and just kind of make calls. And Buy just it. Watch Buy helicopters it. run around. Watch <laughs> Dimitar Berbatov run around corridors and stuff like that. If I had that sort of money, that's exactly what I would do as a hobby on the last day of August and the last day of January.